You may have noticed tiny white bumps on your cheeks, around your eyes, or maybe on your nose. And no matter what you do, they just don't go away. If you have been wondering what they are, they may not be acne at all. These little bumps are called milia, and they are incredibly common, but often misunderstood. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Maria Zizian, a board-certified general surgeon and an IFM-certified functional medicine physician. On this channel, I share health tips on skin health, food and supplements, functional medicine, surgery, and the latest medical research to help you feel your best. And if that sounds good, please like and, of course, share with your friends and subscribe. So let's first clarify what milia are and how they are different from sebaceous hyperplasia. Sebaceous hyperplasia is a condition that is often confused with milia. In my previous video, and I will post a link above, we talked about sebaceous hyperplasia, uh, those soft yellowish bumps caused by enlarged oil or sebaceous glands. And the key is that sebaceous hyperplasia is soft as it comes from these sebaceous glands, and hence the name, sebaceous hyperplasia. Milia, on the other hand, are completely different. They are tiny, hard cysts filled with keratin, the same protein that makes up our skin, hair, and nails. And milia just sit under the surface of the skin, and they look like tiny white or yellowish beads. Since both sebaceous hyperplasia and milia could look like this yellowish and round bead, they are often confused. But again, sebaceous hyperplasia is much softer. Back to milia. Milia are harmless. They're not inflamed, not painful, but they can be very stubborn and won't respond to typical acne treatments. First, let's discuss who gets milia. Milia can affect anyone, newborns, teens, adults. In adults, they're often triggered by use of heavy skincare products or skin that's healing from a procedure like a laser treatment or a peel. People with dry or sickened skin tend to be more prone to milia as well. Sun exposure can also trigger milia. It is important to know that not all milia look the same. Sometimes you may have just a single larger milium, that's a single milia, a firm round bump that's very noticeable. Other times you may see a cluster of tiny white bumps, especially on the cheeks, jawline, or forehead. And that's sometimes called miliary acne or milk spots. However, I need to point out that many milia are not acne per se. So how do we treat them? Milia are treated differently depending on whether we're dealing with just a single large lesion or spot or multiple small ones. Single milia are best removed manually through professional extraction. And I will talk about that in a minute. As to the clusters of milia, smaller milia, they often respond better to treatments like microdermabrasion, light chemical peels, or topical retinoids that help improve skin turnover. So let's discuss that, those treatment options in a little bit more detail. For multiple small milia, this is what may work. First, gentle exfoliation with alpha hydroxy acids or AHAs and uh, like glycolic or lactic acid, they can help prevent new milia by loosening these bonds between dead skin cells so they shed more easily. Then we have retinoids that are also effective because they speed up skin cell turnover. And also it's very important to avoid heavy uh, pore clogging products, especially around the eyes. Now, if you have larger milia, then the most effective treatment is manual extraction. And this is a simple in-office procedure. I use sterile needle to make a tiny opening in the skin right over the milium and extract the keratin. And some providers use a special comedon extractor to, that basically the same thing to release this keratin plug. It's quick, safe, and typically leaves no scar when done correctly. But it's definitely not something that I recommend doing at home. In fact, I have seen a lot of scarring from our patients who are trying to do it themselves. The thing is that milia are usually deeper in the skin than how they look, than what you think. So please, again, don't do it at home. Infection, scarring, and ultimately failure of getting rid of them are the results or consequences of these at-home botched procedures. Now, let's switch gears and look at milia from a functional medicine perspective. In functional medicine, we view the skin as a reflection of our internal health. 
So recurrent milia can sometimes be linked to nutrient deficiencies or let's say poor detoxification of the liver or inflammation. So for example, your skin needs vitamin A for healthy skin turnover, zinc for wound healing and oil control also, and also essential fatty acids to keep the skin barrier intact. If any of these are lacking, your skin may not exfoliate properly, leading to buildup in these keratin plugs. So these nutrients are essential for skin in general and to prevent milia. We also look at your liver and gut function. If your detox pathways aren't working well, if you are constipated or your gut is inflamed or your microbiome is off, uh, it's balanced. So your skin may try to compensate by pushing waste products out through the pores, which can lead to clogged follicles and milia formation. Lastly, with our patients, we also go over skincare routine. Many people are unknowingly using creams or sunscreens with ingredients that are either too heavy or may actually be irritating. Sometimes just switching to a cleaner, non-comedogenic products can make a big difference. So in summary, milia may be harmless, but I know how frustrating they can be. The good news is that with the right approach, both externally and internally, you can get rid of them and actually get clearer, smoother skin. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe, share this video, and let me know in the comments what skin concerns you'd like me to cover next. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.